sitting in my body. My body? I'd rather not be in your body. I want you in my body, Ross. <laughs> I fail at vlogging. Okay, we're sitting here in my buddy's truck, Prairie Duke, and we're going to PD Performance Shop. That's Prairie Duke Performance Shop. It's basically his garage. And uh, you can see behind me uh, my bike. We're gonna finish um, some maintenance items, which is a gasket, oil change, valve adjustment, and then also the dash cam install. And I'll wrap up this video. So let's uh, get inside the garage. Oh, whoa, what do we have here? So you guys know that supermoto I ride sometimes. It's my buddy's bike and he just got rid of it and bought this thing, the FS450. Absolutely delicious machine here. So that means I get to ride it, right? Sometime, yeah, maybe. Sometime, yeah, maybe. It's, uh, <laughs> doesn't sound very good, promising there, but. <laughs> My microphone ended up breaking during all this. I'm talking about the oil filter kit, which is a full kit versus having just the oil filter, it comes with some screens and stuff. Then here's a new gasket for the side that's kind of seeping uh, right there. It's coming out from the stator cover. So that's getting replaced. I didn't figure out the mic was broken until like a couple more clips. So it's gonna be pretty rough. It's your boy Stokat back with a brand new video. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the microphone's still broken, uh, fast forward. Well, that's really frustrating. Um, the battery died in the microphone. So some of the clips don't have audio. I'm just gonna do a voiceover. So we got a new battery in there. Now we're good to go. Anyways, we've made some good progress with the bike. The front and rear covers are off. The engine is always cool to look at. I mean, check that out. Just. That's what makes all the HPs, man, for those sick wheelies. But uh, now we're gonna, I forget, you have to pop something off, or no, you just feel, you put the, yeah, we're turning the engine to go top dead center and doing the rear cylinder first, and then we'll uh, take some measurements. And then you gotta put the feeler gauge in between, like here and here. It's, uh, it's a lot, it's, it's fun, it's experience, that's for sure, to really get the feels. I don't know if I can see any right now. Oh yeah, here's one. So I gotta get both dots lined up with this. That's right, with the case for that there. TDC. So, yeah. This light is making the, the lens freak out because of the frame rate, that's so cool. Okay. Getting close, getting close, and keep going slow, 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 slow. Like a, t a touch more, a touch more. Keep going, and slow, 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 and stop. You can probably go like a, a fraction more to make it perfect, perfect. Stop. There you go. Okay. So guys, you see the two little dots there? That is top dead center now. It's hard to focus because this light is freaking, there we go. Little disco. <laughs> so that's finding TDC, top dead center. Super important. Because when you're on top dead center compression stroke, your piston is all the way up, your cams are like, so your valves, have clearance to be able to close the cylinder, like the combustion chamber. So that's why you do it on TDC. Exactly. So that's when you should have clearance between your valves and your cams. Ah, see? Exactly. School does stuff. Something like that. Yep. That is. So he's really fancy and bought the fancy tool I never had, but that's to go in the engine right down here and it uh, keeps it at TDC so you can't move it. It like locks it in, which is uh, extra fancy, specialized tool always helps when your mechanic buddy has the exact same bike as you that is for sure it looks so pretty like that on the stand all naked and stuff so we're just going to do a leak down test and uh, this is going to tell us the health of your piston rings valves see uh, basically see how tight the combustion chamber is closing <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry back to work here yes yes so this is a, um, the fitting is designed for where? Where's it, where are you putting it on? I'm going into the spark plug. Into the spark plug. Here. Nice. And then this end, of course, will go to a gauge and of course go to the air machine, the air, compressed air creator, exactly. AKA compressor. So here's the gauge that tells you what pressure is going in and what's uh, what it's holding, I guess. Is that how you would say it? Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, it'll tell you the difference between, say you're putting in 100 PSI, and then if it's 
allowing 90 psi out then or yeah i guess that's a way to describe it but basically you're losing 10 percent gotcha so this guy's at 80 this guy's at 60,000 55,000 k i think so bought it in 2016 it's a 2015 model so i guess four years old technically Whew. so this is backed off all the way Okay, so the crank's locked. I'm also gonna step on the brake. It's in sixth gear right now. And we're just gonna go up a little bit. Look at that. Ding dang. It's like one and a half, two percent maybe. Tight like she's new. <laughs> That's right, I like my girls like I like my bike. Tight like she's new. So with any bike, guys, there is a manual for it. It will tell you the exhaust should be 0.25 to 0.3 millimeters and an intake is 0.10 to 0.15. And we are just feeling it with some feelies. These guys here are called feeler gauges and it will slide in between the, was it the lobe and the, and the lifter? Uh, it's called, well, I call them finger followers on these. Okay, finger followers. Yeah, what, so yeah, it goes in between this shiny, beautiful piece right there. Yeah. And the, um, the thing it's actually hitting and you can actually see the wear marks on so yeah the, the lobe here you can actually see i don't know if i can zoom in you can this lens sucks so it gets a little dark sorry guys um anyways you can see the wear marks of where it hits it's kind of cool actually mm -hmm. really kind of cool so the range was 0.25 to 0.30 0 0.25 was loose so i put in the 0 0.30 feeler gauge and it's perfect. It's so you're at the max. And he said that's good because when the engine gets older, it gets tighter. And so being on the looser side of that range is actually good. What's well, awesome to hear. So the rear with the leak down test and the valve uh, feelies, us stealing them valves, it's looking, uh, it's looking pretty good back there. So hell yeah, 50% pass. C's get degrees. So now for the intake side, we have 0.11 and 0.13, the range being 0.10 to 0.15. So the rear cylinder with the leak down and the valve uh, check, let's just say it's got a clean bill of health, so that's nice. And now we do the front. And if you guys are curious or wondering, um, each cylinder has a intake and exhaust side. So it's not like this is intake and exhaust, they both have intake and exhaust for both cylinders. Um, if you don't know, now you know. Now we're doing the front cylinder, leak down test. The reason why it's in sixth gear and holding the rear brake is when you put 100 PSI against that cylinder, that's a lot of force. And um, you don't want to go bending the, the special bolt down there we have in the engine. Yeah, um, tool. yeah it's, it's probably designed, like you said, to take that force. Yeah, part. I think it is, but at the same time, you don't want to take any chances. So it's good to put it in sixth gear, put the bike down, Put your foot on the brake. There's a lot of force trying to push that piston down if it goes a little bit past top dead center one way or the other, and you just don't want to risk it. So, so that's good practice. Because we were just talking about it before we started filming right here, and talking about Harley's. Um, he was doing Harley's in school. With big engines. They would used to hold it with a what was it like a like a breaker like a bar? Breaker bar, yeah. Yeah, like a breaker bar. He said that uh, if you let if you let go or it slipped, it would come up and it would hurt you. It would smack. Like it's a, that's a lot of force. So. Kind of makes uh, makes lots of sense when you put it that way. It's hard to see the reflection. Yeah, I need my. Ooh, this one's not as good, right? Well, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, two percent. Look at that. Dang. Engine's brand new still. That's right. <laughs> Never tracked, never wheelied, never abused, abruised. Man, I cannot speak today. Never abru. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> never abused 
never tracked, never nothing. She's brand new. Please buy it so I can get the new 2020. <laughs> Just checked with the feeler gauges. We're at uh, 0 0.11, 0 0.13, 0 0.12, 0 0.12. So all within the specs. And it looks like the little batteries, right? Little like, yeah. little like watch batteries, yeah. kind of. Oh, you, oh, you have the kit, that's right. Ooh, hot cams. Sounds like a cam girl site. Yeah, see the little watch batteries. There you go. And that will increase or decrease the range between the lobe and the, the what, do you, what do you call it again? Finger, Finger follower? Yeah, that's right. Nice. Rocker arm, some people call them. Yeah. Just depends on the style. So now we're gonna do an oil change. Uh, it kind of sucks we can't turn on the bike to warm it up to make the oil a little bit more viscous, but uh, I don't have my gas tank here, it's at home. So we're gonna do the oil change. I bought the full kit this time because the bike is four years old. I guess technically five years old, four years old. So we're doing the full kit this time. Comes with uh, the two full screens and um, new bolts and stuff. So that's kind of nice. Oh my god, Ross. Of all the people, I think he got this. The full kit's nice because it comes with more than just the filter. You can just buy the filter. I've done that before. Uh, but this time, I think, you know, with the bike hitting its milestone of like 55,000, 60,000K, whatever it's at, uh, time for a new, full new kit. So we're going to grab some food, grab a little snack, and we'll be back in a moment. So you guys will ask why I come here. Well, besides from his great knowledge, it is the best working on your own bike at eye level and not having to bend over to work on these components. It is freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Supervisor. <laughs> that is a cool shot. Okay, the problem and why I'm doing this is right here. It is leaking here and also leaking there and oil is coming down and dripping onto my garage floor. Plus there's some spots that seem not to be the most, uh, let's say tightest. But the, the main problem is you can see all the dirt from the oil hitting the wire and this grommet right here and dirt sticking to it. That's where the leak is coming from. And it's uh, not a big deal, but it's just frustrating to have oil drip from your bike when you're parked. It looks like your bike's not maintained also, but that's good. So. The old gasket's off. It's like a paper metal hybrid, I don't know. Here's a new one. Gonna get some brake clean and we're gonna tie it up a little bit and go from there. Oh, 10.2, no! Oh, over torque. Over torque, my bike's gonna blow up. So we did the uh, brand new gasket and we did some silicone right where it's been leaking right here, so. See what, see what happens. That pretty much wraps up the video here. The bike is pretty much put back together. There are some pieces back at my house, of course, like the tank, blade, stuff like that. And uh, it's all done. Gonna finish the dash cam. Just gotta take that on there. We'll do that right now. And she is ready to go. Okay, we're gonna stick this camera on. We'll get Ross to film. So it's gonna sit like, I think like that. Oh, that's pretty good. Hopefully the blue comes off because that looked like crap was on there. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. It's gonna stay blue. No. Okay, there we go. There's the dash cam finally installed. We're gonna wait a little bit um, because I need to get some footage from it, but in my garage, it's gonna look silly. So we'll come back for some footage, but so far, it's awesome. And the bike's done. So this vlog, we are done. Peace.